What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm going to do a course review slash overview of MGT6311, which is Georgia Tech's online uh, digital marketing course. First things first, going into this class, I signed up for it with the expectation of it being an easy class. That's what I wanted. Um, I had already taken one of my two electives outside of the computer science area, um, and that was with Intest 6450. So this was the second and final free elective I could take outside of that. And I'm really glad that I used it on this class because yes, it was very easy, honestly easier than I expected even, but it was also more interesting than I expected, which is an added benefit. Looking at OMS Central, it is one of the five easiest classes that has been reviewed, and I agree it's definitely the easiest class that I've ever taken at Georgia Tech's online uh, master's or professional degrees. So really enjoyed this class. Um, the reason why I wanted such a light course load this semester is because I made a video about it, but I just got this new job. Um, it's a certainly new workload and new pace of like expectations on what developers are supposed to deliver and much tighter deadlines and things like that. And on top of that, I'm learning new technologies, new stack. Um, so I really wanted to give time to let myself settle into the new role since I started uh, in January. I did know this going into the class, but I would have signed up for it regardless, is that this is the first and only class that I've taken thus far and probably the only one I'll ever take at Georgia Tech um, that is entirely self-paced. I was lucky and, I mean, I shouldn't say lucky, but I was able to finish the course in the eighth week of the semester. So that was back in, at the end of, at the end of February and normally it's a 15 week semester. So I've really been able to enjoy having more free time since I've been certainly busy with other hobbies, um, you know, playing and recording music and whatnot. And plus work has been crazy around a new release lately. Looking at the syllabus, it asks for 8 to 10 hours per week on this course, but I highly doubt that anybody actually spends that long, maybe unless you're in the industry or in the marketing space or something. But for those of us that are taking it as an easy elective from the computer science or analytics side of things, I highly doubt that you're spending that much time. For reference, I spent around 2 hours per week and I still finished in around eight weeks, so that means I had around half the semester to spare. There is a textbook that is called for in the syllabus and course schedule, but I actually did not buy it and never did any of the assigned readings. And I think, you know, as I read on OMS Central, it seems like a lot of people don't do that and it works out fine. There is a required course pack that you have to buy from Harvard publishing company and that's like $38 and that has the required readings for the major case studies. If you look hard enough, you might be able to find it online. I, I didn't really try, but um, yeah, that was $38. So jumping into the weekly schedule, basically every week, uh, maybe with the exception of like exam weeks, uh, there are lectures which are around 30 to 45 minutes and these are pretty recent recorded. I would say maybe they were recorded around three years ago, um, but they are embedded into the Canvas player, so it's not like these are on Udacity or older lectures like that. So they are relatively recent and they're pretty enjoyable. There are transcripts and slides posted, so if you don't want to sit through the professor, you know, talking, you can just download the transcripts and slides, but I opted to actually watch the lectures just so I could see how the transcript matches up with the slides because otherwise it can be kind of hard to tell what he's referring to or talking to if he's talking to a visual. Um, there are office hours once a week with the professor himself uh, and I actually never attended any because uh, as I mentioned earlier I was going ahead of the class schedule and I didn't really have any big questions that I couldn't ask online. He is very responsive on Piazza so that's certainly a benefit. Basically, most of the weeks, you do have a short reflection or like discussion post that you have to add on Canvas, and you're usually required to respond to another student's posts. 
Uh, I was a little worried about, you know, going ahead of the schedule if there were other students to respond to since you're kind of going ahead in time. Um, but thankfully, that's not the case. So it seems like a lot of the people that take this class do work ahead of the assigned schedule. So you don't have to worry about there not being any response or any post to respond to. Um, then every few weeks, so maybe every three or four weeks or so, there's a major case reflection, and these are two to four pages, single spaced, and they do require more work and more time to put into these. Um, I would say you should still be able to do it in an hour or less. And uh, these are weighted more, I'll talk about the grading scale in a second, but I did answer them. Um, um, of course, I did all of them. And I will say, I don't think I actually answered them correctly, but it seems like I, I still have been able to get 100% on them, so it seems like they're grading it from the perspective as if you answer all the questions and you justify your, your responses, you'll get 100 on them, so the grading scale is pretty lax in that regard. Um, after you submit your major case reflection, there's always a debrief video where the professor goes over the answers with some industry professional, and you can see basically if your answer was correct or not. Looking at the grading now, um, Many case discussion posts are the ones that I was referring to on Canvas, and those basically are just you answering three or four questions in a discussion post and then responding to another student's post. Those are 20% of your grade, and there's nine of them. The major case reflections are the ones where you read from the um, course pack, and then you write the two to four page reflection answering the questions. Um, I will say that sometimes it can take a couple minutes to read these case studies because they are kind of long, I would say, maybe like four or five pages and then usually like a ton of graphs and tables, but those are really not very important to uh, answering the questions. Then the big thing that I want to note is that the midterm and final are 30% each. So basically from those two tests, that makes up 60% of your grade. Uh, these both were multiple choice and they definitely didn't take very long. So um, I would emphasize maybe studying some for it. I did not, but you know, I did study for the final exam. It did improve my grade significantly. So on to my personal experience and how I went about the course. Um, at first, I watched all of the lectures at two times speed and kind of like jotted down some notes on my iPad as I watched them. And then I took the midterm, which, as I said, was all multiple choice without studying at all. I don't even think I read through my notes that I took. And I got an 83%, which is lower than I wanted. So going forward, I started watching the exams at regular speed and then took notes um, at regular speed, which basically meant I took more notes. And then I would also briefly make a Quizlet right after. Um, watching the lectures and just from my notes. And then basically after doing that, I was ready for the final exam. And then I went through my Quizlets, read through my notes, and then took the final exam. And then I got a 94 on it. So that obviously helped. I think with it being multiple choice, they kind of ask questions um, that are pretty much just memory based. Like, you know, what does this acronym stand for? What are the four blanks, stuff like that. Um, so definitely reviewing your notes or making quizlets will help. Uh, finally, I want to add that the instructor, uh, Professor Buchanan, is super nice. Probably the most responsive professor I've had thus far. I made the mistake of uploading the actual case study as opposed to my answers for one of the case studies, and I didn't realize for weeks until I got a zero. And he gave me full credit for it, uh, even though I obviously submitted the case instead of my answers. And I really did learn a good bit in this class. It was very relaxing, uh, certainly compared to some of the more intense, um, you know, kind of like, like machine learning and stuff like that. And it was certainly interesting from the standpoint of me actually wanting to apply some of these digital marketing things that I learned. Um, for example, with this YouTube channel, I would like to grow this YouTube channel, even though I haven't been doing a good job applying the things that I've learned thus far. And same with, um, you know, music and things like that. 
I would like to be able to use what I've learned and leverage it in social media, stuff like that. So learned a lot, very enjoyable, and I would highly, highly recommend this as a class to take if you are considering taking a semester off. I would say just take this class. You'll learn some, uh, you'll have fun, and you can go at your own pace. Um, obviously not slower than the pace they recommend, but you can go at your own pace and it's definitely better than taking an entire semester off and you might as well get three credits for it. Cool.